It is the birthday of India's 33rd Grand Master Vishnu Prasanna. A fabulous birthday to Vishnu and we wish him a great year ahead. In this video, I will acquaint you with two of his best games and also share his chess journey. So when I think of Vishnu, I am reminded of James Bond movies because he is very good at predicting his opponent's moves. He is very good at surprising his opponents and at the same time, he remains unpredictable. His repertoire is wide and uh, he has a lot of options. He is flexible. So all these qualities, um, you know, it's like a spy-like quality when you're playing chess and uh, he's really good at it. In addition to that, he's worked as a second to Adiban. In 2016, he started training. So he has a lot of students, including Grandmaster Sureshekar Ganguly, Gukkesh, Ratanwell, Leon, uh, Rakshita Rovi. There's just a few names. He has trained a lot of players. And uh, he started chess when his dad taught him and um, he later joined Solar Chess Club and then started taking chess seriously. He became IM in the year 2010 in Greece. That is when he also made his first GM norm. His second GM norm came in Kolkata Open in 2012 and his third and final norm came in Spain in 2013. So that way he became India's 33rd Grand Master. He also considers that becoming a GM was one of his best chess accomplishments. He's won a lot of tournaments. He's finished in top three in many events and uh, he's a very good reader. Uh, he reads a lot of books and I asked him about uh, the book that he read recently. He mentioned The Silent Patient, which is a book that I also liked. It's a thriller and Roshaman is his favorite movie. And when I asked him about his favorite chess piece, he said that he doesn't like anything in particular, but he loves King Walks. And when I asked him about his favorite opening, he says that uh, he's remained faithful to Nidoff and that's one of his favorite openings. So coming to the chess board, uh, I have two games here which he sent us. So great thanks to him for sending the, uh, the games. And I must also mention that he is married to uh, Dr. Raghavi who is also a very good chess player and they together run a chess academy and uh, they are training a lot of players these days. I have also left the links of uh, GM Vishnu Prasanna's website in the description. Do check them out. Let's come to the game. This is his game against uh, Nigel Short. So Nigel Short is a world uh, championship challenger. So he's also challenged Casper, you know. And to beat him in this fashion is remarkable. Let's get started. D4, Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight C3, Bishop B4, E3, D5, E3. This is an old system. After Bishop to C3, B C3 castles, he played Bishop to D3. And after D C4, Bishop C4, C5, Knight E2, Queen C7. Black is threatening to take C, takes D4 very soon. So he goes Bishop A2. And then after B6, he castles. And after Bishop A6, he develops his Bishop to B2. And Knight comes to C6 and he plays a Rook to C1. The tournament situation was such that this was the final round and uh, Vishnu had a great chance of getting a prize if he wins this game. Uh, this is from Isle of Man. And here his opponent played knight to a4. Now the point is to establish a firm control on c4 square. And here Vishnu had all this prepared at home. So he had predicted that his opponent is very likely to go into this territory and reach this very position. So after knight a5, he played pawn to c4. Now in this position, if you see, after c takes d4, knight takes d4, there are three pieces keeping an eye on the c4 pawn. And there are just two supporters. So here is a quick question to you. Should black take bishop into c4 or knight into c4? Or just completely refrain from capturing on c4 and play rook d8? Just give me a moment. Okay, in this position, bishop into c4 doesn't work because he has a great tactic in mind. He simply plays knight b5. This is attacking the queen. And if the queen goes to c5, he can play bishop into bishop, knight into bishop, and now bishop into f6. The point is, if black takes g takes f6, this knight hangs because of this check. The queen picks up the knight on the next move. So after bishop c4, knight c4, if you take bishop f6 and queen takes b5, there is queen g4 threatening a mate and also threatening this knight. So after g6, white comfortably picks up the knight. Now after queen c5, it's just lost. 
So after CD4, Knight D4, if you take Knight takes C4 in the position, it's still the same tactic. You just play Bishop into Knight, Bishop into Knight, and then Knight to B5. The Queen is hanging, so Queen has to move to C5, and then there is Bishop takes F6, and the same tactic. After GF6, there is Queen G4, picking up the Bishop. So for this reason, CD4, Knight D4, you, you can't really pick up the pawn. Knight just shot probably had to play Rook D8 and keep the game going. But I still feel White is slightly better. So after c4, rook fd8, um, Vishnu pushed his pawn to d5. So after d5 was when he started thinking, like this was probably the moment where Vishnu was now finally out of the book after queen e7. Here the threat is that if you play, um, let's say something like e4 in this position, knight takes e4, and then if you play, let's say rook e1, black can just go knight d6. So he wants to get e4, in this position so if you want to get e4 and play knight g3 then there is ed5 also coming so considering this he first plays rook e1 and now he wants to execute this idea of e4 in this position his opponent played knight e4 and then he offers the exchange with knight g3 and after knight takes g3 he plays f6 h takes g3 and then f6 followed and finally vishnu got e4 so this is the construction that he was dreaming of and he actually achieved it. And then after e5, he adds more firepower with f4. And now f5 and then queen h5 is lethal, his opponent played rook e8. And now that the job is done on the e line, he decides to switch the position of his rooks. This is something he constantly tries to improve the position of his pieces. He plays rook f1. And after his opponent played bishop to c8, he plays queen to h5. And now this pawn on d5 is a passed pawn. So in order to blockade, Niger Shot decides to blockade with, with knight. So he goes knight to b7. And in this position, he comes up with a really nice plan. Uh, I will probably stop here for a moment. Give you a chance to see what you would do as fight. Okay. Uh, in this position, here Vishnu went fe5 and then after fe5, he decided to double the rooks on the f line with rook c2. And after knight d6, he had seen rook c f2. Now, of course, you can't uh, take this pawn because there is a rook f7 coming. So after rook c f2, his opponent played pawn to g6. And uh, the drawback of g6 is that h6 square is now available to the queen, so he goes queen h6. And his opponent went bishop to g4. And now I think it's again a good moment to see what he would do as white. So here Vishnu played bishop to b1. Now black can't really take the pawn on c4 because of the same reason that the rook is coming to f7. So he played bishop to b1 and after rook a d8 he puts his bishop to d3. And then this is one way of preventing b5 for a moment and after bishop to c8 the job of this bishop is done on this diagonal, so he switches the diagonal and plays bishop c1. So you see that there is this quality of consistently looking for ways to improve the position of pieces. This is something that we all can imbibe when we play our own games. After bishop c1, his opponent went rook d7 and he goes rook f6 and after queen g7 brings his queen back because it's not a good idea, especially when you are attacking, to exchange queen. So queen h4. And then after knight f7, I think this is my penultimate question. What would you do as white? This is a very instructive position, I would say. Your rook on f6 is well placed. Your queen is well placed. Um, the bishop on c1 is also doing a great job. So what remains is the d3 bishop. And he finds a great job for the bishop on d3. He plays bishop to c2. He wants to go with his bishop to a4 and uh, trouble these rooks. In this position, he, his opponent played g5 and the queen h5 followed. And then there's always this rook and f7 idea. Here, Nigel Short played rook e e7 and then bishop a4 followed. Now, why did he do this? The point will be revealed after his opponent makes rook d8. This is the last question of the position. What will you do as white? Now, by, by saying that it's the last question, I've already given you the clue that the move is a killer rook takes f7 and after rook takes f7 there is rook takes f7 
and after queen f7, LPDO, the loose pieces drop off with queen g5, and the rook is picked, and he wins the game. Amazing game, isn't it? And beating Nigel Short this way is remarkable. Also shows uh, the the understanding of Vishnu Prasanna. Let's go to the next game. Here he was black. He was white against Stefansson. Stefansson is a grandmaster from Iceland, a very strong player. And this happened in Gibraltar Masters in 2015. So here um, Vishnu goes for e4, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, Rilo pays, and. Uh, after a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop c5. This is an archangel's approach, and Vishnu goes for knight c3, and after b5, bishop p3, d6, he puts his knight to d5. Now, one of the uh, ideas of playing knight d5 is that after d3, the bishop can then come to g5. So, here if you play knight takes d4, you know, there are all kinds of ideas. You can play queen e2 and uh, then d3, but in the game after knight d5, his opponent played bishop to g4 and here he plays c3 and my hunch is that he has also prepared all this at home i don't know much about this game but i have a feeling that uh, this was also prepared by vishnu after knight takes e4 he goes d4 attacking the bishop on c5 and once the bishop goes to a7 he's consistent with his threats with rook e1 attacking the knight on e4 and now his opponent went back with his knight to f6 and uh, one of the interviews I think I have heard Vishnu say that when you are playing a game of chess uh, or let's say in your home preparation if you are able to find continuations in which the normal lines fail then uh, you, you have actually achieved a, a good understanding or let's say you have got a good weapon in your hand something along these lines so here he is actually provoked his opponent to go wrong just by making simple moves I think one other example is his game against Akash where he did something similar. So here after rook e1 knight f6, he just asks a question to the bishop, where will the bishop, bishop go? And uh, after h3, if, let's say black plays bishop to h5, then there is knight takes f6 and if you take queen takes f6, there is g4 and after bishop g6, the queen is trapped with bishop g5. So you see. Normal moves and suddenly the game is over. But this did not happen in the game. After h3 his opponent played knight takes d5. And after bishop takes d5 his opponent went back to d7 to support his knight. And now Vishnu played d takes e5 which is one of the best moves in the position. And the point is that if black takes uh, d takes e5 then he has bishop to g5 attacking the queen. And once the queen moves there is knight takes e5. The king is stuck in the center and uh, the c6 knight is hanging, d7 is attacked, f7 is attacked, it's game over. So his opponent decided to give up the material, give up the pawn and run with his king and he castled. Vishnu continued the initiative with knight g5, uh, f7 is still under a target and his opponent played h6. A good moment for you to figure out the best move for white. Will you play knight e4, knight f3, knight f7 or something else? Okay, here he played queen to h5. Is not really giving away um, this knight because if black takes h takes g5, there is bishop takes g5. And let's say the queen moves to e8, he has bishop f6. What a killer move, isn't it? Now the threat is queen g5 and it's not possible to stop this. So after queen h5, the threats are uh, many. Bishop f7 is one threat, e6 is a threat, knight f7 is a threat. In this position, his opponent played queen e8. And uh, Vishnu just came back with his knight to protect the rook and also threaten e d6. With this move, is also opening the eyes of the bishop and it's now targeting h6. So after queen e7, he played bishop takes h6. So this uh, the quality of this game reminds me of James Bond because there is uh, destruction, uh, there is chaos, but there is no sound. It's just happening one move at a time, and the opponent is not even understanding how did this happen. You know that kind of a quality this game has. And after D takes E5, he wrapped up the game pretty quickly with Bishop into C6, eliminating the defender of the E5 pawn, and then played Rook takes, uh, and then played Bishop takes G7. Here also rook takes e5 is interesting but he went with uh, bishop takes g7 first threatening a mate and after king takes g7 got his rook to e5 
and um, it's game over. Now, if you play bishop takes f3 in this position, white will first play rook g5 check. So his opponent played queen d6, and after rook g5 check, king f6. Again, a good moment. This is the final question of this game. What will you do as white? So you see what plan black has is black wants to run. And what Vishnu does is just prevents that. With rook e1, b80, bring all toys, bring all your reserves and game is over. And here his opponent played rook h8 but uh, after rook f5 it's game over because king g7 and there is mate in 1. So that was an amazing game by Vishnu and uh, I would like to thank Vishnu for uh, sharing this game. I was not aware of this win but I was aware of his win against Nigel Short. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to wish him again. Happy birthday Vishnu. Thanks uh, for sending this. And dear viewers, I hope you liked the video. I would also suggest that you take a look at some of the articles written by Vishnu Prasanna. He's a prolific writer and he's able to share his ideas very clearly and uh, in simple words so everybody can understand. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of qualities to pick from uh, Vishnu and uh, I will be back with another video soon. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.